Right, hello YouTubers. Uh, what we're going to do today is just going to show you this LMBR chronograph. It's a Model R2A. Just had it delivered and um, haven't really. I've tested it basically in, in my man cave, shooting it in the bin with a little BB gun. Uh, but I was basically trying to work out how to use it because the instruction manual that comes with it is, um, other than the bit on the front which deciphers all the letters on the screen, uh, velocity and average velocity, all the rest of it. Other than that, that's, this thing is not that great. It's a sort of flow chart picture in the middle. Um, totally undecipherable. So I spent all day playing around with it, testing it out. Um, the hardest bit, as I say, was the memory function. It's a basic unit, three buttons on the back. You've got an on-off button and a, a COM port for connecting it to the computer. If you want to hook up to your laptop, you would need to get the correct lead. And I do believe there is a COM to USB sort of conversion cable. And the, the software, I believe, is a free download, sort of open source. Now this unit can be set on metric and imperial, so I think before we start that is probably the first setting you want to check. So um, again this screen does light up and there's a function of turning that on and off. Uh, I tried it on and that wasn't showing up so well on the camera so I've left it off and I'll save a bit of battery. Um, and um, I'll, I'll now just uh, show you the function. So right, first of all I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to hold down S2 and S3 and I'm going to turn it on and you should see that flash up there, metric okay, and you have to turn it off and that's now set in metric, once you turn it on that will flash up metric and um, all high or low, which I'll show you again what that means so uh, that is now set on metric and that now says meters a second and joules so being in the UK we work in feet and foot pounds so I'm going to hold them two down again Turn it on and let them go when it now says Imperial. So I'll turn it off, turn it back on, and that is now set on Imperial on uh, foot pounds and feet per second. So that is the two readings on the on the screen there. Now the foot pound will be wrong unless you put in your pallet weight. Now you can do that manually, there's an online converter if you don't want to fiddle around and keep changing pallet weights. Uh, as long as you get your feet per second, know what your pallet weighs, there's an online converter, you can work it out. But this is so simple to adjust um, that I will just show you how to do that, because I probably will do it myself because that is so easy. Right, uh, before we go any further, if you've got it switched on and you see the screen flash up range, that means, um, let's just do that again make sure that work. that means something has gone through there too slow. So if you're handling it and you keep getting that come up, don't worry, it's not a fall, that's just saying that whatever's gone through there. It's got to be a minimum of um, six feet per second, I think. So um anyway, right, okay, so we've shown you how to set metric and imperial. So uh, I'm just going to turn it off again. Now, the backlight, hold down S1, turn it on, and you've now got the screen lit up. See that very well on the camera. So whenever you turn it on now, you will have your light on. But I don't want it on, so what saves some battery and uh, doesn't show up so well on the camera. So I'm going to hold this one down, turn it on, and we now have it with no light. So that's how I'm going to leave it. Okay, guys, if you hold S1 and S2. This is probably the first thing you want to do. Turn on the unit and it will say gain low. Now that is for firearms. So uh, you want to turn it off, hold them down again, turn it on. It says gain high and that's what you want on for air weapons. Uh, once you've got the gain, the gain set, you obviously you have to turn it off again, then back on and uh, it just flashes up what the setting is on. Okay, first thing you want to do is uh, set your pellet weight, press S1 and then you adjust your pellet weight up and down with these buttons and that is in grains, so uh, the last pellet I used was 8.4 so 
So we'll leave it set on there, press S1 to get it back to the screen and you're ready to shoot. I'll just quickly put some readings on it now and then uh, I'll just scroll through the screen for you. Okay, I just took three shots for it, just with a little low powered uh, spring BB gun, just to show you um, what's come up there. Now, once you've got some measurements in it, you can press S2 and scroll through and get all your sort of averages and um, all the rest of it. Um, sort of mean velocity, um, maximum velocity, deviation. Uh, so you just keep pressing S2 and it'll step through all those things. And again, if there's a, some letters you don't understand, that is printed on the, the only useful bit of information on that thing. Now, when you get to the end of the screen, that'll come up with this. Um, once you've scrolled through all the averages, and that is uh, the function I was telling you about: rounds per second, um, rate of fire counter. Now, that is the last screen, and to get out of that, you've got to press S3 to get back. So. Um, I'll just get back to that rate of fire screen again and it's on rounds per second and now to press to change it to rounds per minute just press S1 and you'll notice that change to rounds per minute and the bottom screen is the number of rounds fired so that, that's quite useful uh, and I've definitely got a use for that already so I'll just get back to the main screen and you'll see you've still got the last reading on there So once you've got a few readings on there, you can go through your settings, so press that and then S1 and you'll see that says V002, that's the actual shot, so let me just get back to one, so that's the first shot, second shot, third shot, and then you scroll through, the next one should say zero because I didn't take four shots, so, so that's basically that, and to get back to the screen, press S1 and then S3 again, and you're back to the beginning. Oh, the biggest thing I had a problem on this was the, the memory. Uh, I couldn't quite suss it out for a while, but I think I have no sussed it. So, once you've got all your settings on there and you want to save them, uh, once you, you can just scroll through and look at them and do what you like with them. But once you, you sort of you want to save it, press S2 three times and you'll get a screen come up saying V average, then press S1 and you'll get this screen pop up and it does disappear pretty quick. So if you press S1, you'll get the memory function screen come up. Now, you've got R, W and CL and the memo says 250, that's, that's how many memory slots you've got left. Because um, I haven't saved anything in this other than testing it, I cleared it. So I'm now going to show you how to save that. So press S2 three times, press S1 and then press S2 for W, which is right and S3 to get back and now they should be saved so you write it and save it now I'm going to turn it off and turn it on again now when you turn it back on that memory is not saved in there when you turn it on the machine is ready to go again so if you press S2 once you'll see no shots so what I'm going to do now right turn it on Press S2 three times, then S1, and you'll get your memory thing flash up again. Now if that keeps disappearing before you press anything, just press S1 again, and you want to read, press R for read, which is S1 again. So now that should have read um, what was in the memory. So if I press S2 once, S1, and then we have the last three shots, which have now loaded into memory. Now that really foxed me, I just expected that to still be in memory. So what you've got to remember is, once you've written it, which is the W for right, when you turn the machine back on, you have to read that data again to get it back in the machine. That's like recalling it. I I, I, that should have been obvious really to me. I mean, I sort of worked with computers and things. So um, I think I covered all the functions. I say that memory one was a bit of a foxer. Um, and what I will do now, I'll just clear that memory, which is CL, and then you get a little sign that says wait, F1, F3 to get back, and uh, F3 again, S3 rather. 
So once you clear that memory, that will still stay there until you turn it off and then turn it on again. So um, if I press that, that, yeah, that's all now clear. Now if I want to load them up again, press that three times, press one, press R for read, and so what you got to remember is um, if you want to call your memory, read it. If you want to save it, write it, which is W, R for read, and if you want to clear it, CL. Now once you clear that, that's gone. Um, so at the end of the session, save it. But when you switch the machine back on, you have then got to read that data back in. So I hope that's uh, made that a bit clearer for people. Like I say, the instruction manual was not that clear at all. Um, but now I'm sort of clear how to use it properly. I'm happy now, I can save my memory. And um, we will give it a full review and a test. And um, I say we've got the rate of fire, we've got something lined up for that. We're going to have a bit of a shootout with two semi automatic guns and see which one come out top speed wise. Uh, and that'll be quite interesting. So I uh, look forward to that. So, quick recap hold S1 while you turn the power on and off to get your light on. Press S1 to get your pallet weight up and down with S2 and S3 press S1 to get back to your shooting screen and to recall your memory S2 S1 and then you can step through your shots with the S2 and S3 so and then S1 to get back and S3 to get back to the main screen so that's it guys I hope that's been helpful uh, that's a fantastic little unit uh, you can also lay it on its side to shoot, so um, I don't know if you perhaps if you want to test your pallet velocity downrange a bit and you've got a pretty accurate rifle, you should be able to shoot through there alright, uh, even at a distance. So um, I like it, um, it's got a standard tripod thread on the bottom, so you can put it on a tripod, which again, very handy. Uh, it's quite sturdy, uh, I'm not going to rock over too easy. So um, we'll do a proper review on it when the weather's a bit bare and we can actually shoot some stuff for it because doing a review without actually using it would be a bit crazy so there you have it guys uh, that's what it comes with a terrible manual um, the only useful bit really well there's a couple of useful bits on the front um, it decodes all the, the readings on the screen what the V's and the E's and everything stand for so that's quite useful when you used it a bit you'll probably um, it'll probably stick in the brain a bit and um, yeah so I hope that's been helpful um, if anyone's got any questions, want to know anything about it, want anything tested with it, uh, let me know. So you can use it with firearms, but they provide a little paper pattern thing to put over, and that's basically to stop your powder and debris splattering and possibly getting in the unit. So um, that's that. Obviously with air guns or CO2 guns, you don't have to do that. So that's it, guys. I hope that's been helpful. It took me all afternoon to, to suss it out. And... Um, bit of search and there's not much about these on the internet as I say it's one, one review by the air gun gear show and some others which don't really show you much at all uh, and there's nothing out there really showing you how to press what buttons do what so hope that's been useful and um, once we've used it and reviewed it I'll, I'll probably be highly recommending it because I like how it's made, I like how it functions it's pretty straightforward compared to the other one we tried out and uh, yeah see you again Hopefully, yeah, uh, when we're trying this out.